welcome everyone to episode 1.5 of Is He Cooking? Now I have a treat for you today. We are watching a very high level match. Actually, the highest level of predecessor that has been played to date. These two matches are taken from the most recent PCC tournament. And now, if you guys noticed, this is not episode 2 of Is He Cooking, but episode 1.5. And I want to clarify why as to why that is, because in the first episode, there was some new tech, which is, so to speak, a build that a player was innovating. And th I, th they, it was actually used in a competitive setting. So... Previously, episode 1 was delving into theory, where as episode 1.5 now is delving into actual practice. So here we have our crunch player, which will be utilizing the previously mentioned tech in episode 1, in the jungle. And this is the top EU team against a top NA team. So. I'm going to analyze two games, one that's a victory and one that's a defeat to give a balanced perspective on the build. But there's just some one key detail that I wanted to mention for this build, mainly because the the in episode one, this build, I was analyzing it from a, the perspective of a, of a solo leader. However, this build has been used in the jungle. Which, if you if you don't know why that's kind of odd, at least it was odd to me, is because the solo lane has more farm than the jungle. When you're in the solo lane, you just get more golden experience as opposed to the uh, the golden experience available in the jungle. So I did not think that this build was possible in the jungle, but here we are, and we see our crunch player starting with a bit of an unorthodox opening. He goes blue to four camp to red, which will give him level three and it will allow him to contest river buffs at three minutes. We see his mid laner getting ganked prematurely, unfortunately, and he's running for his life, but the crunch being there helps to uh, allow the mid laner to survive. So for those of you new junglers, some of you guys might be tempted with these level two ganks and whatnot. and these uh, invades that are super early, but the, but the, the reality is you don't want to do, uh, I mean, like most of the time you don't want to do that. You see the Richter did uh, an early gank and this Crunch being an intelligent jungler knew, saw him with low HP and he's invading. Obviously also take everything here with a grain of salt because this is a competitive setting. So any minor mistakes are being punished to the highest ability of the teams that you're not going to encounter in, in a pub game. So you, you notice the Zaris player, he rotated over to help confirm that blue camp, whereas, you know, it, 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 you're, you might be pinging to your solo leader, help me, help me, because it, it is a free blue camp, but he's not going to know that in a pickup game. Anyway, but moving on, back to, back to, to what I mean regarding level two ganks level two ganks have their plates they can be good however when you level two gank you you need to secure an advantage a, and, and like the lowest lowest advantage that you want to secure is a blink like if you're going in a level two gank in a lane you want to secure at least an, an enemy opponent's blink so that you can capitalize up on it within the next five minutes. If you're playing jungle, you have to try to keep tabs on the enemy blinks as best as you can. Because if you do, you're gonna be way more potent and effective. So keep that in mind. So here, the, the, the crunch just mirroring the enemy jungler, just trying to new, like stabilize um, the, the, the game in the sense of just he doesn't he didn't he doesn't want the Seb to gain an advantage especially against the Zaris. Zaris should win against Severog a hundred percent if if there's no kind of um, intervention. And he just doesn't want the Sev the, the tips to be in favor of the Severog. But but back to my level two gank hawk. So level two ganks are very common especially in lower ELOs. And you can 
like they, they they are also done in higher elos but it's usually because the jungler is certain he's either going to get a blink 100 percent or a kill because normally you should be contesting the first river spawn at three minutes as a level three jungler it's important it's very important because when when you do something like a cheeky invade as a jungler, you personally, yeah, you get a little bit of an advantage against the enemy jungler because you steal some camps. But if you were mid laner, does not get a river buff, and the enemy team gets two river buffs, you're you're kind of throwing your mid laner under the bus. And for what? Just to steal a couple camps. It's not worth it. Because jungle needs mid lane. Mid lane and, and jungler, they're symbiotic. And here, our crunch player catches the, the Richter just oh, completely overextended. Oh, and they stun. Oh, but the phase pull. You, like, you, you, you guys can see the high-level play here. Just very clean by the blue team here. And, and the, a very clean recovery by the orange team. But you see, because the Richter just overextended, just a, a tiny little mistake like that. Just checking, the, trying to get a blue buff timer or something like that leads to him losing the first Fang 2. This is the mar like the, the margin of error at, at, at this level of play is razor thin and it's cutthroat. And, and you make any kind of small mistake, you will be punished, as we are seeing here. So the crunch going for the assassin crest, and uh, the, uh, it, it's obvious why you would. Uh, Witch Stalker is pretty much the only assassin crest you should go on crunch. We have some of the players that like that like to go some unorthodox builds. However, if you're just trying to to build the consistent, reliable way on crunch, you get Witch Stalker. And especially in a game like this, you can Witch Stalker Severog Ult. You can Witch Stalker Richter Hook, which will which can save your life. So, just to wrap up the two level two gank and and to just move on to the actual game analysis just keep that bear that in mind because a level two gank if you don't succeed you basically set yourself back macro wise and uh, for a macro oriented jungler he he that's exactly what he wants you're playing right into his hands so moving on so here we have the enemy jungler securing scion buff for the Severog, but our crunch player being the good jungler that he is, comes to counter gank and feeds first blood to the Zaris. Oof. Oh my gosh, the, the, and the mid ganked, and not only that, the Murdoch snipe missed. So two, th this gank is totally in favor of the blue team. They, the Severog ult was used, Murdoch ult was used, Countess ult was used, and the and not only that, the orange team got the first blood. So huge swing, huge swing in favor of the blue team here. So now, with with that, the the crunch doesn't have to force anything. He's just going to macro a little bit since he is low HP. Going augmentation first as a crunch. And jungle does not provide that great sustain. Normally, like say if you, well, he doesn't, he only has tier two components, right? So that there's also that. But if say for example, if you opt to go mutilator, and that item gives you just all the sustain you need in the jungle you quite literally you don't quite you don't heal quite as well as a chimera but when you're in, you're a crunch player with mutilator and you're you're fighting on jungle camps you're gonna heal up so if if, if you guys i i would say to the newer jungle crunches out there mutilator is a good option especially against tanky compositions however if if you're more confident in yourself in your ability, augmentation is the first item to go. And in this matchup, with the crunch being ahead, he is just going to wallop Richter. Richter made, like in this matchup, as a Richter, you can't fall. If you fall behind, you're a sitting duck, basically, anytime you overextend. And, um, 
as soon as he the the, the blue jungler killed Richter, they go for the the only available objective on the map, which is Mini Prime. I would really, really like to see Zaris get this mini prime, but however, it depends on what the team wants to utilize it, how they want to utilize it. Putting it on the crunch is good too, because you can you can not only take it to the mid lane, but solo lane and duo, etc. But they opt to go for the Zaris, and that's it, like it, it's a very safe, safe thing to do, and it's very smart. Cause Zaris now he just has an overwhelming advantage over the Sevrog. Oh, and they're go they're collapsing on the mid and, and jungle here. Oh man, and our crunch player overextended sadly. It was a really good gank by the, the orange team, but the Zaris comes to help. A little bit too late, the Countess blinks out. The Richter is stuck here. Will they be able to kill the Richter? Oh man. Oh they will. Ooh. For the yeah, Z Zaris, one one he is an S tier character. He just uh competitively due to his flexibility. It, he, he can be a, a solo laner, or he can be a jungler, and just what he provides the team with his Colosseum and his other parts of his kit, like his right mouse button, which is his spear poke, it gets bonus damage when they're low HP, and as you saw it, against Erichter, it just executed him, essentially. So now, dual lane, just... Oh, wow, they get a free blink off of the Murdoch. Wow, that that was that might have been a panic blink there, but the crunch can just take it easy. Oh, and because they got the blink there. Oh no, he's retreating. He he. Oh no, he's not. He's he's going back. He changed his mind. So now they're rotating over for the second tank too. Beautiful. Victor, the enemy jungler, spots it out. He's he's, he's undoubtedly alerted his team, and now. The fight is on. How is this going to unfold? Oh man, a missed hook. That's... Yeah, when you're behind as Richter, that's it. You miss a hook and you're cooked. And they get the Fang Tooth as a result. 6-2. Right now, the, the advantage is overwhelmingly for the blue team. And as a crunch player, this is the dream scenario. You ju When you're ahead, you just... Oh... Oh, wow, he survives. That was so risky. And the missed Murdoch ult. You, my goodness gracious. Yeah, that was an extremely ballsy play. <laughs> uh, but well done. It pays off. And so now we have our first item of the build, Berserker's Axe. Oh. I mentioned augmentation before. Augmentation, he's building augmentation now. Augmentation is like... There's one character in the game that benefits from augmentation the most, and that's Crunch. So I I, I misspoke there earlier. Berserker's Axe has become a very popular choice as a as a first item now. We're gonna have to bear. Please bear with me through the replay system. It's terrible. It's it, it is one of the most atrocious replay systems in all of video games. Like look, just a two two double speed and look it's been frozen for how long just abysmal for shame for shame Ometa. this is disgusting okay so now i have to pause it and just rewind it because we don't even know what happened okay sorry guys for that it's just bear with me here so the crunch goes into the blue side of the enemy jungle and is Trying to set up a gank for the solo laner here, and we'll see how it unfolds. Oh, Crunch catches the Countess here, and eats the ult, misses the uppercut, but because his team was there, they just eat up the Countess, and now they're chasing out the Richter. Oh, and he blinks and uppercuts in. But is it really worth it? I don't know if that was worth it. It just... He, the Crunch's blink only yielded a little bit extra damage, unfortunately. Not the most uh, potent blink, but... Still, one for nil trade there. They kill the Countess. And it looks like they want to take down this tier 1 tower for that gold. They're shoving the lane, and let's see if they can take it down. Severon should be back in time. Oh, 
And they do take it down. And now Zaris is going to take Scion. And what is our Crunch going to do? He has his red side available, but he it looks like he's opting to back so he can help the duo lane. But at this point, in competitive, when you start to fall behind, the enemy team does not release the throttle. They they put the pedal to the metal and they do not hold back. The, the orange team securing some more kills here. The Murdoch escaped by the skin of his teeth. And the Countess starting to build up some stacks on his passive. Which is crucial as a Countess. The, 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 that, that passive um, ability vamp which is basically you leech, a, uh, or rather you heal through your abilities, it's huge on countless. But still, Crunch, let's see how he's doing at 15 minutes compared to the enemy jungler. 108 CS compared to the enemy jungler's 93. So, 1 in 1 to 1 in 4, the, uh, there's a very clear um, jungle diff in this game. Not that the Richter player is playing bad, it's just it happens, it's normal. Oh, the Decker. Nice little... Ooh. What, what, what's this item called again? Riftwalkers. Decker had a nice little Riftwalkers, but... The Crunch, very intelligently there, started targeting the Pays, and it seemed like they didn't really have the potential to kill anybody, but they got the Pays blink at the very least. I just kind of... Unfortunately, I would like to pause just because... The, the replay system, again, just want to... I'm just going to say this, say this one time and we'll move on. It's so atrocious. We just saw the phase blink, and look. On the top right here, the it, on the phase portrait, it, it shows that the blink is, in fact, still there. Just atrocious. Ometa, please fix this. Let's move on. So now, the blue team wanting to secure the enemy jungle. Oh. Ooh, this is bad for the crunch. Oh, yeah. They do secure the mini prime here, but it seems like at the cost of everybody there. The Twin Blast and Zerus go down as well. It was it was basically a 5v3, and the Richter survives. And, and the triple kill goes to the set. Oh, goodness gracious. So, the blue team... Oh, they have a DC here. Unfortunate. Oh man, the Decker DC in a competitive match. That's devastating. Yeah, so they... Oh, <laughs> that, that... Okay, the Decker is back, but I, the damage is already done at this point. You can see that... I don't blame the Orange team for taking full advantage. It's a competitive match, and if DCs happen, that's that's a uh, you know, server issue. And so they, they very quickly secure the Fangtooth, and now they're going to retreat as quickly as possible as to not get caught out, but, ooh, the phase saving the Richter, because the Richter most definitely got caught out there. And it's unfortunate. I, I firmly believe the blue team would have 100% secured the third Fangtooth, or been, in, been in, in an actual position to contest if they didn't have the DC, but hey, that's part of the game. So they, they invade and steal the red buff, and then now they're content to just kind of um, go back. So, the, the, they saw that the enemy team was retreating after the, the third Fang Tooth, just to kind of reset and buy items, and then they just saw that opportunity and said, hey, we could steal the red buff. They got in and got, got out. Very high level play. Very nice. And they continue to um, just try to build small advantages over time, which is the way that you want to go about this MOBA. Our Crunch player finished his augmentation, and if we look at the enemy jungler uh, going Fire Blossom, and it looks like he's going uh, Ella Frost as well, but with the Crunch being ahead, it gets his two item spike before the enemy jungler, which is big. Anytime you're ahead as Crunch, you want to punish the enemy team, and, and, and you want to Take advantage of that advantage. Oh, oh, nice. He got an uppercut on on the the phase. The phase rooted him. Oh, but the hook didn't hit. 
Oh, they're they're gunning for this crunch. Ooh. Oh, nice uppercut. Oh, he. Uh, yeah. Oh, the crunch played it absolutely perfectly up until. Well, not perfectly, but he played it really, really well up until that last dark tide for the Countess. And now the Zaris trapping everybody in. The Countess just desperately trying to get get a kill off of that. The, the Murdoch blinking in. Confirming the kill on the Bellica. Oh, this is a... This, this, this seems like... Well, no, a 3 for 3 trade. Well, no, not 3 for 3 I think TB died in, this, in, in the... Um, in the duo lane. The Severog. But it was a triple kill triple kill by the Zaris. And this is a 6-in-1 Zaris now with Augmentation Citadel. And he's about to get... Uh, I, I, I forget the item name. It's it's the Bruiser Blade with Blight that, that has anti-heal. Zaris, when you have a, a, a fed Zaris, they do a lot of damage. A Zaris that's on, like, on an even footing or similar level not 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 that huge of a threat his mainly his coliseum is what you want to watch out for but a fed zaris is a is a monster you want to watch out for that so all in all right now pretty calm everything is pretty calm they're pretty much waiting for the next objective, the next big team fight. Our crunch player is starting to build into Gravity Greaves. And what I've realized in analyzing these games is Gravity Greaves provides a very interesting escape. But I'll, 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 I'll speak about that after this team fight here because our orange team is trying to steal or Prime from underneath the blue team's nose. And now they're going in, and the blue team steals the Orb Prime. And we'll follow, follow the Zaris here. Okay, it doesn't let me click the Zaris because. Whatever. But man, oh man, th that's just devastating. The, the orange team went for a very sneaky early orb prime and they thought that they could take it without the blue team being prepared and they get punished for it it's a, a one for five trade and our crunch jungler did his job and secured the objective that that's the his main job and from that point on this kind of mistake is by the orange team is big enough to just completely lose the game outright you like and, uh, when you, when you get to a high enough level, you can't like sometimes you can't come back from some, such a big mistake because it's it's just they get a free inhib. They they probably could have gotten two inhibs if they really wanted to, but they're just going to go for the double buff because they still have Warp Prime. They they got the free inhibitor and they're not they're not overextending or pushing it too far. What they're going to do is go for the double buff here with Orb Prime, and then they're going to secure Primal Buff with Primal Fangtooth, which is huge. The orange team knows that's what they want to do. They know that they want to get double buff because that will help them secure possibly more inhibitors, even the game. So the orange team is trying to secure, or at least prevent them from double buffing, because they're in a do or die situation at this point. Oh, the Zaris just goes in goes in and he survives but the crunch just gets deleted oh man this is devastating i feel like that was a a bit overly ambitious by the zaris to just go in 1v5 like that you can't do that and now the the orange team they're they're doing really well like if they just go back and reset they they basically secured a zero uh, a, a, a one for nil exchange in their favor and they bought a lot of time uh by wasting or prime buff and i can't tell you how much time the orb prime buff has left because the replay system is pretty archaic but um the blue team here is still trying to make use of it and they're unknowingly walking over a bunch of wards so But now, 
the crunch player is back and they're going to try to secure and they still have more prime so they they want to try and secure an advantage where they can maybe take primal thing tooth so in this the, if you're watching this game and you might see like man my games don't seem like this and it, and, and it's because these are just five people on comms against five people on comms like you see the precision the phase overextended for a split second and goes down and now the Zaris ult and now this this seems like the beginning of the end for the orange team they unfortunately got caught out while the blue team still had or prime buff you you, you don't want to fight a team with or prime buff and it it just went down they quite literally died 10 seconds before the or prime buff fell down and being down two people will be a free primal fang tooth for the blue team. That's just how it goes. You 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 you, you want to try to avoid fighting when when you're behind, especially when the enemy team has buffs. <laughs> Look at them all nicely navigate around the mines. Really well done. If this mine was a little bit closer, somebody would have had to take the hit there. But now we see our crunch player completing his gravity griefs. And to go back to what I wanted to say before the Orb Prime fight started was Gravity Greaves provides Crunch specifically an interesting option because there are situations where he just can get completely caught up. Crunch can just be way overextended and then the end, he's basically dead. But the interesting thing about Gravity Greaves is even in those scenarios where he should die 100%, it gives Crunch an out because he can just jump with the Gravity Greaves and double dash to safety. He can, he can dash while he's in, the, in, in uh, midair. And not like no other character really has that kind of potential. It, even if you have Grux with Gravity Greaves, he just has a little dash, like his, his little dash uppercut and you go five feet. But Crunch, he just has the distance, especially if it's an Empower Dash, you go even further. So, the Orb Prime is coming up soon, and they clear the flower there. And the blue team is just looking for a fight here, because they have Primal. When you have Primal buff, you want to fight the enemy team. Because the Primal buff just provides so much extra damage. So much. And not only that... It, if they get low enough, it executes them. So the orange team right now, they're in a desperate situation. This is basically going to decide the game, this next engagement here. We'll see how it goes. But anytime you're fighting into a primal buff, you, you really don't want to. Like the orange team does not want to. They, they basically want to defend. Oh, the Zaris goes in on... Oh, the Countess. But the, the Crunch went in on the Richter. And now he's going in. Yeah, that's oof. Yeah, the, the the orange team was in a very desperate situation to try to prevent the free or prime, and they, you know, they just took an unfavorable engagement, and that's it. That's gonna be game. Primal buff wears off, but with that, the the blue team secures or prime, and now the. Uh, there's it's it's a 5v2 scenario not for that that long but you just get so much gold or prime buff it's devastating yeah there's no way that they can defend this Zaris is split pushing on the right they're looking they're looking to take right inhibitor and from the look of the game length, this will be the last engagement. Yep. Inhibitor down. They go in on the Richter. The Richter blinks out. Crunch gets an uppercut in there. And if you saw, I just want to read. I just want to just highlight that the Crunch went in to uppercut the Richter, which saved, and the Richter saved himself to blink out. Now, because the Richter is safe. The crunch is overextended in a dangerous position. And what does he do with the gravity greaves? He just presses space bar or jump. And then for the next second, second, like 1.25 seconds, he's floating in the air. 
untouchable by most of the enemy team. And he say, he, he basically evades all the danger that he was in simply by just hitting spacebar. Zaris with a bit of a whiffed Coliseum there, but the Decker stunning the Seb. The allows for the blue team to secure the kill on the Seb, and now the blue team is just going to look. <laughs> See, just bobbing, weaving, dipping, and dodging with the gravity greaves. That's all that's necessary. And three three players go down. Our crunch player goes down too. But um, it seems like the end of the game. I mean, you have. Or prime buffed minions attacking the core while the fight's going down. The, the the carry getting any kind of chip shots on the core when he's not actually attacking the players during that time. It's very, very difficult to defend against. And so this was our first game of this episode of Is He Cooking? You we, we got to see the use of the gravity greaves only slightly at the end there, but it's really hard to find games that last beyond 30 minutes where it's, you know, especially at this high level, you know, usually they're decided by this time. This is even like about as long as they, they get, they don't, they don't really go to much longer than that. And it takes time to get to four items, five items. However, hope this is the first game that was the first game. We're going to jump into the second game in just a moment, guys. Okay, guys. So here we have the second game that we're analyzing of this episode. Now, in, I, I chose this game specifically because things don't go as well as they did in the first game for our crunch player. And we'll see how that turns out with this build. It's, the build is essentially the same. Again, this is also a, a, a game from a very high level, uh, well, it, the highest level tournament play. So it's uh, one team with five players on comms against another team with five players on comms. So this is this is about as competitive as it can get. And now our crunch player opts for a red buff, two camp, and four camp clear. Or blue buff clear. I think he's going the blue buff. Yep. Now, I believe he's going for this clear here because the enemy jungler is a Kalar. And I think that he feared Kalari invading and stealing his blue buff or three camp or whatever it is. So. He did this as a means to protect his blue side, and now he's sweeping, and he's coming to try and contest the river for his mid laner. But he sees that the Severog is really pushed up, and so he's coming to gank. This could be successful. It should be a kill here, 100%. Oh man, that's that should be a kill. Oh man. Yeah, first blood. First blood. The Sev being very dominant so much so that the lane was pushed up that much and they opt to freeze the lane there a nice little freeze if, if you don't know what the crunch did there he, he he basically um stopped the wave from crashing into the tower so that his wave would meet the enemy wave outside of the tower and what that allows for the new players to understand is now the solo laner when he gets back to lane he will still have the most like he'll have the most possible camps there that he can fa get farmed from and not only that it, it helps the wave to be closer towards his own tower oh wow the Severog. The Severog really going in there. He, he he ganked mid lane there, and he was just just a smidge shy of stacking the Morgesh. Very very uh, ballsy play there. And so the, again, the Crunch does the same thing that he did in the solo lane to the mid lane. He 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 helped the 
keep the wave in front of power so that his mid laner, Morgesh, doesn't lose any farm. Higher level junglers do that. They, they not only set up waves for their lanes in those situations, but they also catch waves that maybe your mid laner goes to gain uh, another lane and they have a wave crashing under tower. Good junglers catch those waves because it's free farm, free gold, and it's really good, really good. So far, everything is in favor of our orange team here with the crunch. Oh, and he's waiting for a bigger buy here. Just wait, he, he's short a few gold. There he goes. And now he's, he's on his way to build Berserker's Axe. So we have a 2-0 lead in favor of the orange team. Crunch is level 4. And the Kalari is level 4. Now, Crunch wants to get to level 6 as quickly as possible because it completely transforms the character. Crunch is way stronger at level 6 than he is at level 5. It's almost infinitely stronger. It's, it, 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 they are basically two different characters. So Crunch level 5, he's still coming to gank the, the Sevrog at level 5. And the Sev, ooh. Ooh. They're, they're devoting a lot of resources there to, to secure the kill on the Sevrog. I'm not sure if Sevrog used his blink before. It seems like that he did. Because the Sevrog didn't use blink now. You can't tell by the replay system. The replay system says the blink is down, but who knows if the replay system is accurate. However, they, they do burn two blinks there, which is a bit of an overlap. A bit of an overlap there, but hey. They secure the, the, the kill on the uh, Severog. And now the Severog is behind 0-3. to 3. Now, normally that would be a done deal, but this, this player, Lauber, he is quite possibly the best Severog solo lane player in all of Predecessor. So, as far as I'm concerned, he could be 0-15, and you still cannot count him out. So, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived by that. Our Crunch player hits level 6 here. And he's sweeping for a dual lane gank. He doesn't trip any wards. He's feeling like good about the gank now, so he... Because the dual lane has priority, he is invading the enemy jungle. Priority meaning that they, they are pushed up further and in control of the lane. So if the crunch gets in trouble in the enemy jungle, the dual lane, since they have priority, they, get, they can easily help out. And they just do the conservative play, which is smart. He just takes a, a, a three camp off of the enemy jungler and goes back to help um, his solo lane. And who died? Oh, the mid laner died. The mid laner died to the Kalar, which is very dangerous. You you do not want to. As a mid laner, mid lane Morgesh dying to a Kalari is. It's got to feel really really bad. So now the crunch, seeing an opportunity here, is going for the. Mini, and they're trading the first Fang two because undoubtedly the orange team's dual lane hold the crunch that they're going for. Mi oh no, 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 I'm sorry, I mixed up the map. No, they were not going for Fang two. They were not trading. The orange team just saw an opportunity that the Kalari was out of position, and then seized the mini prime. So, so, oh, somebody else died. The, oh, the Morgish died again. Oh, man, the Morgish died to the, to the Kira this time. The second character that you don't want to feed after the Kalari as a mid laner. Oh, man. So, the, the, the orange team's Morgish having a really rough game. The Crunch here playing very well, almost perfectly. And just farming. We, we, we see he has 80 CS to the Kalari's 58. Oh, well. Oh, my gosh. Just look at this. 83 CS shown on the HUD. 
on the on the scoreboard 73 cs shown and 58 cs shown for the kalari but the replay system is jacked up so who knows what, what numbers are actually accurate this is just uh the game's in early access but this is just sad it's really really painful that this replay system is so terrible especially when you're trying to analyze a game objectively however moving on so no opportunities present themselves so our punch player is back farming and we'll see how things unfold from here on out let's try to get a, a relative measure about how the solo lane grux cs compares to the solo lane Severog. Our Severog player has 70, our Grux player has 81. So despite being 0-3 as a Severog player, he's only behind approximately 14 CS. That's outstanding by the Severog player. Presuming that a lot of those are stacks, then the Severog is not in the worst position. There's a mid lane gank by the Crunch player on the Argus, and Argus just blinks out. He did, he did not even want to risk it. However, the Kalari ganking duo lane secures the kill on the phase for a 1-0 a, a trade. Our crunch player diving, but not getting anything out of it. It's just a waste of time, essentially. And right there, so although the crunch player got a blink from the mid lane, the enemy jungler got a kill in the duo lane. So it was a misplay by our crunch player. Not not that the play was bad, but that's just the nature of the jungle. When the enemy jungle take makes a gamble and, and gets a bigger yield than you, he's outplaying you in that in that moment. And so our crunch player goes back to farming. We have a dead even three to three kill score however um the mid lane is, is right now the scariest position here because the orange team's mid lane is way behind the and the blue team's mid lane and mid lane and jungle they're the ones who help dictate map control and so the, enemy, the blue team's mid laner in the form of Argus just has more CS and zero deaths, and our Morgish player is one and two. Which the one kill does help, but the, but the Mori is also behind in CS. And so if the Mori falls too far behind, they're, they're ba the Morgish is basically going to be a non-factor, which is the, the most devastating thing. And this is a huge, huge steal. The blue team secures Fangtooth for free. All they did was a sneaky Fangtooth objective. They, they, they just sneakily took it, and this is one of the biggest advantages you can secure in competitive in your pubs anytime. Anytime you sneak an objective like this for free, and you, you don't you don't even fight for it, it's it's huge. It's massive. You this is the, the quickest way to lose games. Look at this replay system on one speed. On one speed and it freezes. This is pathetic. Oh meta, please. How let's just let's just wait how long it's frozen for here. I have a feeling we're gonna be here until the end of the game. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is atrocious. Look at this. Has it stabilized? Okay, it, it, it seems to have stabilized there. Just wow. Oh, Meta, please. Please fix this. All right. Anyway, moving on. It doesn't seem like anything happened there, but still, just inexcusable. But before, before I, I got distracted, that's the one of my biggest pet peeves when I'm playing 
is when my team gives up objectives like that for free. Under attack. That's all it takes. One one team to fall asleep at the wheel for 20 seconds, and then boom, you lose the thing too. And then it's hard to recover from that. Oh, he goes in on the Seb. The Seb went to check for Mini. The Seb undoubtedly wanted to place a ward there, which he just did. And he blinks out. Wow. And now that the Seb just burned his blink and, and went back to lane, they're trying to burn down this Mini Prime. I think that this probably should go to Morgesh. Honestly, Morgesh needs all the help. But they're going to give it to the Grux. Which isn't a bad idea. It should... The, the Severog actually did more damage to the Grux tower than the, Gr the Grux did to the Severog's tower. That's crazy. Tower under is, is the Grux going to secure the, the tier 1 tower there with Mini? They do, yeah. Grux does. That, 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 that Mini given to the Grux actually helps Grux. Oh, no, no, no. Grux doesn't. No, that wasn't the... The tower that fell down, it was the, it seems like the mid tower. No, mid tower for the blue team is up and so is the duo. Oh, I could have sworn that the, the prompt said that the orange team scored the tower. Anyway, I don't know. It's the orange team that, that lost the tower and it was their duo tower, interestingly enough. But right now, this is a pretty bet. It feels pretty bad for the Crunch Jungle here because there hasn't really been any opportunities. And the, it's frozen again. So the, the, the Crunch went fishing for an opportunity in duo lane, but the enemy duo is just so far back, back that there is no opportunity. And you, you guys may have noticed too that we're 16 minutes in and it's only 3 to 3. It's It's common in high level games that there are less deaths both like both of the teams are are a lot more careful they're they're very diligent with their wards their ward placement they, they they're very careful with their positioning and so scoring kills is much more difficult in the the higher level that you play generally in in lobbies where you have pickup games like just in casual queue and you have somebody go 29 and 2. It's just because they, they there was basically one or two enemies on the enemy team that have no idea what they're doing. They fed them. The Kalari securing that river buff. Second Fang Tooth is up, so we will probably see some kind of big team engagement soon. <laughs> they have two hordes right there. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, mid lane, a fight is breaking out, and it, the Morgesh being caught out in a 4v2 match. A 4v2 fight gets sniped, and the Mori just falls further and further behind. The, the, the mid lane Argus is just getting so far ahead and that, that that is just going to be more and more difficult for the orange team to compensate for and the orange team sensing the urgency of the situation tries to quickly take fangtooth but panics and retreats i don't know they, that that might have been their only opportunity to take fangtooth because now the blue team, in all of them are now in position where previously they were out of position. And now the orange team just concedes Fang too. I, that, that, that might have been a pretty big misplay by the orange team. They might have, the Kalari was within the vicinity and probably could have stolen it, but still, you still have a chance to secure it. And the numbers were actually more in favor of the initial Fang Tooth pull than, than they were after when they retreated. It went from like a 3v3 maybe 3v4 to like a, a, a 3v5 4v5 so but hindsight's 2020 they, they, they cannot have none of that in, in, in the moment and after the initial two kills the, the crunch has just not been able to find anything 
nothing at all. They took advantage of the the, the Severog, but look at this. The Severog 171 CS to the Grux's 187. Despite dying three times, still right there in CS. That's why Lauber is probably the best Severog solo laner in the game. He's he just... You can't do anything to stop him. Who did he ult? Oh, they were, they were going for the Kalari, but the Kalari lives. Moriesh is, is a good pick into Kalari, because Kalari is super elusive. And so, Mar the Moriesh can mark the Kalari and then up in, in, in a... An opportunistic weight ult when the Kalari is low. Like, there could be a team fight breaking out, and then the Kalari tries to get a kill, doesn't succeed, gets dangerously low, and then the Mori just finishes. But still, so far, a very uneventful game. Very uneventful game. Unfortunately for the orange team... Wow! Look at this. Although the, the blue team's Kira is 2-0, the Kira only has 147 CS, according to the replay, where... The orange team, their Murdoch has 203. 50 more CS. Just insane. Simply insane. And it, it does show in the items too. Two tier one components, a tier two, and the and an expensive tier one. Yeah. Again, the crunch contesting the river buff when it when it comes up, finding the river buff, but not finding any opportunities. And as a crunch player, the later the game goes on, the worse it is. Because the enemy team has a considerable amount of CC in the Argus, the Narbash, the Severog. Crunch is one of the, the hardest characters to play into heavy CC teams. There's just nothing you can do once you get CC. You just get locked up and sent to the respawn screen. So here he's clearing two wards here. A very nice 60 gold for our Crunch player. Possibly 90 in one sweep? No, I think he popped two No! He might have gotten 90 gold in one sweep. Wow. That's a record. I, I have not. I, I haven't even gotten that. No, I have. <laughs> but but it's still really good. It's still really good. So Big War Prime is up. We have our Crunch player building into the Gravity Greaves. However, yeah, our Crunch player is ahead three CS compared to the enemy jungler. But you see, 22 minutes in, and still we only have had one more kill than it was at 16 minutes. Yeah, both teams just very careful. Very, very careful. They do not want to feed any unnecessary kills. Because at this level, it could just mean defeat. Seriously. Yeah. This is this is a, a rough showcase for for our crunch player here because it's just nothing. And when 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 a team is diligent with their warding and their positioning and they're careful, you're just like a dead in the water. What can you really do? He's looking, he's looking, he's looking, and he's just not finding anything. And it's rough because the blue team they're up to Fangtooths. And if they secure this third one, then 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 our orange team is in a really dire position. And for for, for you newer players, that third Fangtooth that gives you the eight percent boost to everything. Oh, hold on, the fight's breaking out. They pull the Severog down, which is not exactly the pull that they want. The Kalari goes in on the Murdoch. The blue team is able to DPS down the Grux and then the Crunch. The orange team does confirm the kill on the Severog, but it's a one, one versus two trade in favor of the blue team. And not only that, the orange team lost their jungler. Oh man, and, the, and then the orange team just... 
they just fed two kills right there. The duo just was way overextended and, and got devoured by the blue team. That was a big mistake. That was a big mistake because it went from the blue team securing Fang, just only third Fang Tooth, to securing four prime and then Fang Tooth. Huge error by the orange team. Devastating. And uh, honestly, I'm just going to tell you right now, there, there's a very small probability that they're going to be able to recover from something like that. On this level of play, you don't recover from something like that. That that, that That's enough to just... Like, if, if they just gave up third Fang Tooth, they would still be in it. But as it, as it stands right now, probably not. No way. Getting Orb Prime on top of third Fang Tooth? Oh my gosh. The orange team is going to have to pull a miracle in order to try to salvage this game. Because now they have... The third Fang Tooth benefits on top of Orb Prime. And our Crunch player struggling to complete his Gravity Greaves here. And to be honest, in, in this game, the way that the game has unfolded, it's almost useless. With the amount of burst DPS that the blue team has at their disposal, with the Argus and the Kalari and the Kira, the Kira is 4 0 now. 4-0 as the carry, and the Kamari is 3-0, and not only that, Argus picked up a kill too, oh, yeah, I don't want to be a doomsayer, but it, it might be safe to say that the orange team is doomed, but they're gonna try, they're gonna try, when you're, when you're, you know, competing, you, you fight until you see the scoreboard, no matter what. Larry pops the flower, which is good. It's good to take the flower off of the map for the orange team, especially if, if like Kalari overextends and is being chased by the crunch that he can't leap over the wall. But not, not much to be done here. Orange team on their back foot. Blue team playing very well. They're they're together. And then just like that, look at that. The crunch player just eats uh, an Argus stun into Argus um, rock, into a couple Kira shots, and he's down to 40% HP just like that. And then he just has to go back and heal. What else can he possibly do? If he stays any longer, he's just going to get deleted. And that's kind of one of the weaknesses of crunch. You, you eat one CC, and then you take almost all your HP. And so here, the orange team trying to desperately defend and hold on here while the blue team seemingly switching from the mid lane to take the right side and hit her so, so we'll see how it goes Kalari missing some daggers Oh, they get the Severog with the set. Oh, the, the Severog moves out. And look at that. Crunch almost dead. Just like that. Crunch didn't even do anything. Just tried to hit the Severog once. And they try to desperately take out the Narbash, but it's just not enough. Narbash in this recent PCC tournament has been an unsung hero. People have underestimated how much the Drummer Boy has an effect. I mean, his heals are game-changing. Game-changing. In exchanges that are drawn out and don't end almost instantly, Narbash reigns supreme because he just heals his team's damage for everybody. It's un unmitigated healing when when they disengage from a team fight and are recuperating. Which is just the he, he is the only support that has that potential, and in this recent PCC, a lot of the teams that prioritized Narbash won, and you could see that in our enemy blue team here. They 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 actually won the entire tournament, and they use Narbash to great effect. He's he, he might be the most impactful support in the game. 
He is incredible. What what FaZe does for one character in terms of healing, Narbash does for the whole team. And it's it's even better than a temporary shield like Muriel. You don't have you don't have to be so diligent about timing your heals, you just get the benefits of it. And so the orange team doing what they can to try to hold on, they see that the that the Fang Tooth is coming up. And they're trying to prepare for it, but being at such a huge deficit, what can they really do? They're actually ahead CS-wise. Very, very nicely done by the orange team to actually be ahead in terms of CS. But still, the it's the story of the carry, jungle, and mid lane being so far ahead. Because look at this. The, the Sevrog, who's 0-4, is only about 25 CS behind the Grux. That's it. And he has his tier 4 shoulders, so he is super tanky. Super tanky at this point. And now the blue team looking to take Primal Fangtooth. They're, at, they're, they're probably just positioning for a bait here, because the Crunch can't engage here. Neither can the Grux, really. Now they collapse on the orange team. The orange team desperately trying to retreat, get, get, get some kind of favorable engagement. The Crunch overextends there and gets deleted because crunch cannot really frontline he can't, he's not a tank and now that the orange team lost the jungler that is a clear advantage to the blue team side they basically if they want to force it they can get a free primal fang tooth and they see the murdoch overextending oh but the murdoch kills the kira huge by the orange team the, 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 the Kira is a very big source of DPS for the objective. Oh, but the Morgesh overextends and dies. Oh, man. Devastating. And just like that, the, the blue team takes back their advantage. The orange team is backing. So is the blue team here. And that's that. With such a big advantage on the blue team's side, they're just going to try to um, pressure an objective and and draw out the crunch and Grux because with, with just with an Argus stun or a Narbash stun, the blue team has enough DPS just to outright delete them. They don't have a front line, but the blue team does in in the form of Severog. Severog is a great front liner and ta much tankier than Crunch and Grux. And the, t and, and the Severog also built tank. Painted Guard, Chrysalin, Unbroken Will. Anytime that the Severog gets CC'd, he gets that bonus to armor, both magical and physical. He, he, the, the blue team does have a, a, a front line, whereas the orange team doesn't have a true front line. And the, look at this. Crunch trying to get just a, a, an opportunistic engagement loses almost half his HP. And r from that point, that, that that's enough to just secure an objective here. The, our crunch player is going to try to end heal off of some camps here while the blue team is fishing for a pick. It looks like our blue team is going. Yeah, it looks like they're going for. No, they they, they changed their mind. They're baiting. They're baiting for uh, someone to step through the fog wall so that they could get deleted. But the orange team believes that the blue team is going for the primal, and so they're 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 they're. they're Forcing the objective here on on or prime, but they 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 get off of it, and now the, the oh the, the the fights aren't engaging. Our Grux is trying to engage for the orange team. Does misses a smash and grab. The crunch goes in, and and the Grux goes down because he's not a tank. He can't front line. Where the Severog is just a okay. He still has more than enough HP, and now it's a five v four advantage in favor of the blue team. And it just seems like they're just going to secure an objective and steamroll our orange team, sadly. They're watching, yep. Blue team is starting to whittle down or prime, and the orange team, it's now do or die. They have to do something. And our crunch player is going to dive in. And he unfortunately misses the steal. And the blue team gets the... Or prime for free, and they just collapse on the orange team, and... The, the orange team evaporates. They disappear like an ice cream cone in front of them. Just gone. No trace. And that's going to be game. That's going to be game.
And just like that, our blue team secures victory. And so even though you saw that our crunch player did in fact have the gravity greaves, when a team is coordinated enough and they have the right kind of composition, Crunch just cannot frontline the way that a Sevrog can. And he just would get deleted anytime he was even remotely slightly out of position. And so I think that seeing this build at the highest level of play confirms that this build cooks. He or she was, in fact, cooking. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed episode 1.5 of Is He or She Cooking? And stay tuned for more. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, fight on, friends.